Battleground Arizona, more big names planning a political pit stop. Why some college students in Arizona are being asked to voluntarily quarantine. Plus, it's Hispanic Heritage Month. We're kicking it off with an Arizona leader building on a legacy that goes back five generations. 12 and 12 starts right now, 12 minutes, no commercials. And now we are live statewide to so a big shout out to all of our viewers in Tucson. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, Facebook and on YouTube. Hey guys, it's Tram here. Turning now to the latest on the coronavirus here in Arizona, the Department of Health Services reporting 484 new cases and 22 new deaths. Now a few things to note here. ICU bed usage is down 8%. Now that is good news, but our R naught is back up to 1.01, the 27th highest in the nation. While statewide numbers continue to go down, there is some concern on our college campuses. New numbers from ASU show there are about 478 confirmed COVID-19 cases among students. 77 of those people are being isolated on the Tempe campus. There are also only eight known confirmed cases among all of the university's faculty and staff. The situation a little different at the University of Arizona. The university is now asking all students to voluntarily quarantine for 14 days. Team 12's Jen Wall joins us from the university's campus in Phoenix. Jen, why the recommendation? The University of Arizona is asking for all students to take steps to quarantine on their own for 14 days. They're hoping that it will help slow the spread of COVID-19 in and around the Tucson campus. Health officials in Pima County are concerned about transmission of the virus in the area. The recommendation coming after 133 people tested positive for COVID-19 on Friday. The cases are a mix of students living on and off campus and then university employees too. The Pima County Public Health Director says there are areas around the university that are a worry for them when it comes to the spread of COVID. U Arizona's President Robert Robbins said in a weekly briefing that the university expected to see cases increase, but the jump has been too much. Now, as part of its test, trace, treat strategy, the university says they're offering both antigen and PCR tests to find infections. On Friday, 133 of the 1,512 tests conducted on campus came back positive for a positivity rate of 8.8%, U Arizona says. Now, the university wants students and staff to download the school's COVID Watch app so that they can find out who's been exposed and then help track and treat right away. Stay with 12 News for updates here. For now, we're in Phoenix. Jen Wall. 12 News. Jen, thank you. Now, when a vaccine comes out, would you be comfortable actually getting it? Well, a new NBC survey shows right now only about 39% of us would be. President Trump hopes to have the vaccine ready before Election Day. Hey, don't forget, you can always find the latest details about the coronavirus and how it's affecting Arizona on our 12 News app. Meanwhile, at least 35 people have been killed and dozens are still missing in wildfires burning across California, Oregon and Washington state. Entire towns have been wiped out, thousands of homes lost and tens of thousands forced to evacuate. Evacuations have been lifted after a wildfire flamed back up this morning in northern Arizona. The fire in Donnie Park first sparked Monday night. Ten homes were evacuated when it started spreading again this morning. Some structures were damaged. The fire is being investigated. Now, Crystal, there's just so much going on. Give us our forecast 411. The only rainfall we're seeing in Arizona is in archived photographs from our 12 News weather watchers. This one sure is a beauty. Boy, that rain, a sight for sore eyes. Meantime, Sally is throwing historic rainfall at the Gulf states. As much as 10 to 30 inches of rainfall expected there. Just a little bit of rain entering the picture in the Pacific Northwest in the next few days here, helping to ease up those wildfire woes just a bit. But notice there's this big old void here for California, Nevada, and Arizona, where we're going to have to remain on guard for fire danger, especially as wind sneaks up on us later on this week and this dry air gets reinforced. Today, all you're going to find on the monsoon meter is a one in northern Arizona and the White Mountain zeros elsewhere. If a storm does ignite, it would be an exception, not the norm, and the threats would be lightning and gusty winds. Oh, and we are winding down on monsoon 2020. We officially call it quits 
in just a couple of weeks. And if we don't add to any of these rainfall totals, we're going to end up with the driest monsoon on record for Sholo, Prescott, Flagstaff, second place in Tucson, 10th driest monsoon on record in Phoenix, third for Kingman, and it would be the driest monsoon for Yuma. Dry weather continues to be the theme as an upward trend on the thermometer pushes us past those average temperatures and lands us near record territory Wednesday and Thursday. Crystal, thanks. With less than 50 days to the election, Arizona is getting a lot of attention. President Trump visited the Valley yesterday, if you'll remember, and we've just learned that Second Lady Karen Pence will visit Phoenix Thursday to participate in a military spouse licensing roundtable. On Friday, she'll participate in a roundtable on veteran suicide prevention. Now, this is the latest in what's really becoming a long list of political visits this week, as Team 12's Matt Guras explains. That's right. We've gotten word that Ivanka Trump will be visiting Phoenix tomorrow. She's meeting with Governor Ducey. They're expected to talk about jobs and taxes and, of course, other issues would likely come up as well. And then later this week, Friday, to be specific, Vice President Mike Pence is headed to Arizona. And, of course, all of this is on the heels of President Trump's visit here to the Arizona Grand to court Latino voters. Let's talk a little bit about the polls and maybe why the push of the Trump administration to get here. They show a fierce fight for Arizona with President Trump trailing Joe Biden by about four points. Don't forget, this is a battleground state that he won by about the same margin back in 2016. We're talking four points again. His event yesterday was a roundtable discussion with Latino supporters. It's a traditionally Democratic constituency he may need if he wants to win Arizona and the White House. Just a point or two could make all the difference for the Trump campaign. In 16, he lost the Latino vote by 30 points. Here he is speaking yesterday. Uh, Joe Biden spent 47 years selling out the Hispanic American community, sending your jobs to China, raising your taxes, surging regulations. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't sound too good to me. It's... Given the president's recent visits, it appears his team is going to make State 48 a regular stop down the home stretch. Again, the vice president is headed this way later this week, Friday to be exact, and Ivanka Trump is headed here tomorrow to meet with the governor. As for the other side, Vice President Joe Biden and his running mate Kamala Harris have not yet come to Arizona in person, only holding virtual meetings. You got to imagine, though, that's all about to change. Ballots come out in less than a month. In Phoenix, Matt Uris, 12 News. Matt, thanks. Right now, we are following breaking news in downtown Phoenix right now as a police situation is underway near Phoenix Police Headquarters. You are looking live near Washington Street and 7th Street in downtown Phoenix. Obviously, a lot of activity happening there. Police have set up crime scene tape and have locked down that area in front of the headquarters building. Of course, we'll continue to follow this story when you join us for 12 News First at 4. Well, this month, 12 News is celebrating Hispanic heritage. This is our chance to recognize the contributions of Hispanic Americans to our country. Team 12's Joe Dana spoke to a leader who's helping shape the future of our community, and he's a new father who's already building on a legacy in Arizona that goes back five generations. I'm Adam Lopez Falk. I'm a proud fifth generation Arizonan of Latino descent. My wife is a, is a multi-generational Arizonan as well. We just had a little baby, uh, a little daughter. Her name is actually Arizona. I am the uh, director of leadership uh, at Valle del Sol, but I'm also a school board member in the Alhambra Elementary School District. I, I oversee a program called the Hispanic Leadership Institute. And this is a program that's been going on through Valle del Sol for, for over 30 years. We have about 46 elected officials um, currently sitting in seats across Arizona who are graduates of our program. I believe that Arizona is enriched by, by Latino leadership. Um, you know, this, this state has a, a deep, deep history of, of strong Latino leaders. We look back in our history, Raul Castro, uh, people like Ronnie Lopez, Ed Pastor, all these folks who have done these amazing things for our state. And, and Latinos and, and are not just from Mexico. Latinos are from, from uh, dozens of countries. We bring such a rich culture. We bring a rich language. We bring a rich uh, uh, culinary palate. All these things that, that people love about our culture. 
I, I think the biggest challenge for our Latino students in, in school is the fact that, that we have a lot of inequality when it comes to school facilities, opportunities for our students. Our Latino kids are, are going to be the ones that are going to be astronauts, they're going to be doctors, they're going to be uh, uh, the reporters, they're going to be leading the state. Arizona doesn't work without Latinos. I look at the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years of the state, and we're just going to grow in importance. Um, and, and I'm so excited for the future of Arizona because it's going to be even more diverse. It's going to have even richer culture. Um, and it's truly going to be a place that I think our children and our grandchildren and so on and so forth can be proud of. Well, 12 News will continue to bring you stories of the contributions of Hispanic Americans in the Valley. If you have someone you think we should profile, let us know. Email us at connected12news.com. Time now for the look ahead, the stories you'll be talking about a little later on today. A troubling investigation underway right now after an Arizona coffee shop is hit with racist graffiti as part of a suspected crime spree. Plus, Hobby Lobby changes the game. The craft store just raised its minimum wage to 17 bucks an hour. We want to hear from you. Should all companies follow their lead? Text us your thoughts, 602-444-1212. And that's your 12 at 12. The facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes, no commercials. We're always on anywhere, anytime on 12news.com, the 12 News app, and our socials as well. Don't forget, we'll give you the very latest on that police situation unfolding in front of police headquarters as we first told you about in breaking news. Again, we'll have more details on First at Four. We'll see you back here again soon. Please stay safe and have a wonderful day.